brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties in the Dhamma. I am supposed to speak about problems. Huh? I am supposed to speak about how people can cope with problems. I think whoever did this topic for me must have thought that uh, I must have faced a lot of problems myself. Huh? So now they want to know what will happen if problems come to them because problems always come uninvited. Even Malay say malang tak berbau. So I'm going to teach you how to smell problems tonight if I can. But we will have a problem because problems have no smell. So man, no matter how much you try, it is tasteless, it is colorless, it cannot be seen. You cannot anticipate problems. Eh? Actually, I do not know how I cope with it. The only thing that I know is life must go on. So when you remember that life must go on, there shouldn't be any problems, isn't it? It is people who forget to live. Uh, these are people, people who forget to live. People who forget that life is precious. People who forget that life is short. People who forget that it is important to live a good life. Because they keep on forgetting. Uh, these are people who have a lot of time to remember problems. Because they forget everything else, life. And life is everything. Problem is one of those very small things in life. In fact, I believe that it is not even there unless we choose to put it there. Then there will be problems. Whatever it is, I would say that I have been very lucky. Hmm? Very, very lucky. Because at the time, when I saw a big problem in my life, suddenly a lot of good merits ripen. Huh? So I wouldn't take that for granted anymore. Pati rupa desa va socha, pubeja katta punyata, atta sama paniticha etang mangala muttamang. I was at the hospital bed and one day I asked myself how come I got so many visitors? Many of whom are here tonight actually. These are people who I, whom I know to be very busy in life. They come to see me, to make me smile. They just come to smile at me and that's good enough. Some people who has never cooked in their life. Cooking was a big problem. Until they saw the reason to cook. Uh, cooking is a real challenge. They cook. Every day I eat the same food actually, you know. Then I saw people with very big hearts. Eh? They gave me all kinds of happiness according to their individual capacity. Never in my life have I seen so many friends gathered around me while I'm lying down there with a big problem to look facing, to face. Eh? But this time it was different. I felt lucky in a way. So somehow these people who were around me helped me to forget my problems for a little while for a little while, like taking aspirin. After some time, the headache will come back. So you must cure it. And I knew that the day I get out of this hospital, I got to handle things myself. 
but that stage did not come yet. Then I realized, Pati Rupa Desa Vasoja. I must have been born at the right place at the right time with the right people around me. To be Jakarta Punyata, I must have done merits, uh, to have done meritorious deeds in the past. That bless me with these friends who knows how to care, who just cared the right way, did the right things at the right time. Now, these blessings we enjoy because sometime in the past, somewhere in my wicked childhood, you know, what song is that? Sound of music, I must have done something good. So some way my wicked childhood, no matter how wicked it could have been, I must have done something good. And now I live to enjoy it, to spend it, so to say. And then there's one more part, Atta Sama Panitija. Itang Mangala Muttamang. To set oneself in the right direction, this is the highest blessing. That one, people can only encourage you, show you, help you, but you have to walk that direction. They can't push you all your life. So what is this right direction? If you can find it, you can anchor your mind towards this right direction, then all problems become very small. Because we have something very important to look forward to. And when we want to achieve this dream, it's not just a useless dream. This is freedom. This is truth. This is enlightenment. You see, some, some people, they have a big problem. They are very shy to say that my ambition is to be enlightened. Very shy. Because enlightenment is a word that is too big to be conceived. Too big makes them shy. If I say I'm going to be enlightened someday, I don't want to they laugh at me. How can I say such things? But I am committed to this, to this little ambition that if at all we want to progress in life, we must believe, not just believe, we must have glimpses of the truth to the fact that enlightenment is some distance away but is a direction that we all must take. If you cannot anchor your mind to this ambition that I want to be enlightened, then much or probably almost all that the Buddha has taught will only linger in your mind as an intellectual ideal. Enlightenment is the ideal. If we can anchor our mind there, nothing can shake us. Then you will realize that the Buddha's teaching has a proper reason to be taught in that manner. So don't be shy to say that I wish to be enlightened. Because it doesn't matter how far you are away from that goal, you know. As long as your heart has set its direction towards that goal, then if somebody makes you angry or tries to make you angry, and you feel stupid trying to be patient, 
If somebody make you a cripple and you feel a little, a little bit foolish to try to be patient to that, but if your heart is anchored towards a noble cause, then you will realize that the patient has a reason. The reason is a very big and important one. So, I feel lucky in a way. Sometimes I don't know whether it is wrong to say that I feel lucky every day. I open my eyes, I just know today many people around this world never open their eyes anymore. They die in their sleep. I'm still a human being, breathing in, breathing out. So much more anapanasati, yeah? Open your eyes. Make two choices, only two. Today is going to be a good day, choice number one. Choice number two, today is just another day. <laughs> What to do? I cannot change. I am like this. Only two choices. Choose one. I don't have to help you to choose. Eh? Just choose one. Only two. Today is just another day. Okay. Today, I'm going to make it better than yesterday. Only two choices. If every today is a better day than yesterday, you are on the right path, isn't it? Enlightenment is still very far, no problem, but we are getting nearer. That's what matters most. It may be a very small step, but definitely a very significant one. You know when you do good, eh? no matter how small it is, it is still called good. It may be small to the eyes of others. We don't care. Because good is priceless, depending on the situation. Now one day there was this small boy. He was walking along the beach, yeah, the beach. Miles of it. Very long, sandy beach. You know what he was doing? You know when the tides, the waves comes in, it will bring a lot of starfish, starfishes, uh, whatever. So this small boy, he will walk along the beach, he will pick one by one. You know starfishes, there are millions of them all over. Every time the tide comes in, there will be millions of starfishes. He will pick one. He'll throw it to the sea and he'll smile. He walks a few steps, see another one, picks it up, throw it into the sea. That's that. Evening time. So one day there was this old man. <laughs> so man came to this small boy. I see you here every evening. I say yes. What are you doing? I'm throwing starfishes into the sea so that they do not die. So the old man told this child, he said, you are wasting your time. He says, why do you say so? Do you know how many miles this beach is? you know how many million starfishes there are? You are throwing them one by one. What difference would it make? Go and do something else. Hey, but this small boy looked at this old man and told him, he picked up one starfish, said, uh, what difference does it make, you said? You look at this starfish, eh? you throw it into the sea, it makes a lot of difference to that one. <laughs> and that is the value of good, you know. No matter how big or how small, we don't care. Good is good. Don't have to wait, isn't it? Some of us, uh, we choose what kind of good to do. Hey, that means we are missing some opportunities, isn't it? Can never know. 
It makes a lot of difference to this one. So how do I cope with problems? Or how do we cope with problems? Actually, we are very lucky people. Pati Rupadesa Vasocha To be born in the right locality, to be born at the right place. Right place means where Dhamma prevails, where there are teachers to guide us towards the Dhamma path. And that is why tonight I feel that I am sitting in front of a very lucky crowd. And not because of my presence, please, eh? because Brickfields is one of the major temples in this country. And people who come here get a lot of opportunity to listen to very good Dhamma from very distinguished teachers and masters. You are very lucky. There are people to put you on the right path. So must feel blessed. And being at the right place means we have listened to so many very wonderful teachings, right? But listen only. Many people listen. We always hear of the four Brahma Viharas. Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upekka. Actually, this is the secret to solving all your problems in life. I will think that it will be redundant for me to explain what metta is. We do that every time we have service. We do that every morning, some of us. But we remember one thing. Metta makes us feel okay. We always say, may I be well and happy. Well means well. Mentally well, spiritually well, physically well, well in all aspects and happy. If you have resolved to be well, you have resolved to be happy, then you should be okay. So if you feel okay, how can you face problems? If you are okay, everything is okay. What? If I don't hate anybody, How can I have any enemies? Isn't it? If I don't hate anybody, everybody is my friend. So I do not have any enemies. So who is there to hurt me? Unless I hurt myself. Formula 1. Maybe some problems cannot be solved by Metta. But maybe Karuna can. Karuna means I understand my reason to exist. My existence is to ex to assist. I assist those who are weak. I assist those who need my help. I resolve to make life better for everybody around me. So, in looking after other people, actually, I'm looking after myself. If I know you are hungry, people say, a hungry man is an angry man. Don't know how hunger is related to anger, but I think you can understand 
when you are hungry, no patience to listen. Hey, I hope all of you had dinner, or else uh, I'll be in trouble. Uh, if I know you are hungry, I give you food. Okay, after that you won't harm me, you won't get angry with me, you won't scold me. Yeah. That is wonderful. You see, one day, one day there was a acrobat. The acrobat was performing an act with a little girl. It's like circus in Bangsa, isn't it? See, this acrobat, this man, he will put a long pole on his shoulder. Yeah? And then this girl, little girl, will climb up and then she will do some acrobatic acts up there, you know, twist and turn and spin. Every day they do that. So one day, this man told this girl, he said, you just go up there. He says, don't worry, you know, I will look after you, to the girl. And when you are up there, you look after me. So if you look after me, I look after you, ah, nothing will go wrong. The act will be good. No accidents will happen. But this girl looked at this man said, No, 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 no. Not a good way. I think like this better. When I go up there, I look after myself. I do whatever I have to do correctly. Are you below? You look after yourself. If everything you do is correct, nothing will happen. If everything I do up there is correct, nothing will happen. Huh. Hey, very smart also. Okay, good, very good formula. The girl is smarter, isn't it? Ah, that is why in Buddhism we say that when we look after ourselves, we look after others. If your heart is good, nice, kind person, you don't hurt anybody, what, do you? You can sit with anybody, eh? you look after others. But if you don't look after yourself, every time you open your mouth, you use words that cannot be found in the dictionary, that only hooligans understand, then you are a very difficult person to get along with, isn't it? Ah, so in looking after ourselves, we look after others. And in looking after others, we look after ourselves. Both ways it works well. Both ways good. Our duty lies there. So what problem can they be? Can there be? No problem. If problem still exists, then maybe mudita will work. I think I'm running out of formulas, eh? There are one left to pick up. If all else don't work, please don't commit suicide. So now we Modita, modita means altruistic joy. To be joyful. I look at you, doing well in your career. There are two kinds of feeling. Either I get very jealous of you, which is the usual case with human beings or I rejoice. Rejoice means tumpang suka. Never mind like people say you shock sendiri pun shock lah. No problem. As long as I'm happy because mudita means I'm happy that you are happy. See you walking around 
You know, if I sit there and see Brother Victor walking around, Sister Poetry walking around, and everybody walking around and get jealous with everybody, I might as well die. I'll be the most frustrated man that has that is existing on the surface of this earth. So you see, every time somebody walks past me, if I practice mudita, wonderful when I share your joy, I walk through so many people, isn't it? Oh, you're nice. So your happiness is mine. So much to look forward to in life, isn't it? So why be silly? Get jealous. You know, eh, some people, when they are not practicing mudita, never heard of it. And their hobby is to challenge with people. If their husband is a multi-millionaire, and then they meet the wife of another multi-millionaire, ah, finished. There will be a fashion show. Must challenge. Always frustrated, trying to challenge, trying to outbeat, trying to outdress, trying to outdo. There's no limit. Na. Why don't we just look, feel happy? Ah. If other people are lucky, actually we are lucky, we can still see lucky people around, isn't it? We're lucky to be alive. Lah. So mudita is like this. So I feel many human problems is due to jealousy, due to, due to their lack of skill in handling the emotions that arise in them. So now we have so, so much things taught to us. But we, we only put bookmarkers. Eh? Hey, I read until this chapter. Eh? Next week talk is about what? They want to continue and continue and then they keep it. And then after that, they only wrote one thesis in their mind. That's all. But their life does not improve. Eh? Upeka is very interesting. In fact, Upeka was the formula that helped me a lot. And I am very happy to tell you that Upeka works for all of us. But what is Upeka? Balance of mind, equanimity, peace cannot be disturbed, so abstract. Let me explain. In life we have black and white. Which is better? Now, it's going to be a problem. Black and white. Which is better? Depends on what people in Paris are wearing, isn't it? Ha! Huh. If the ladies there wear black, black is better. In life we have black and white. Which is better? There's only one answer. I don't know. Yeah. That is the only answer. You say black is better, you are asking for trouble. What if Mr. White comes? He will like. You say white is better, you are in the trouble. You are in big trouble. What about people who like black, they come along and give you trouble. So what is the only answer? I don't know. If you don't know, then you're very stupid. People say, hey, 
I think I don't know makes you very wise. I'm still smiling uh, because I don't know. That's why life very interesting. You see, one day there was this very famous man. I think you all have heard of him, uh, Peter Stella. Isn't it? A very, he's blind, but he gives very good, very, very nice to these talks. He was blind from very young. So one day somebody asked him, he said, You are blind, eh? but he is very highly educated. He has all the degrees you can think of. Eh? You know, this thing about being blind, eh? Did you ever feel bad about it? Ha! Ah, he gave the only answer, the truest answer. What? I don't know. He said, come to think of it, he said, have I not been blind? The president of America could have sent me to Vietnam. <laughs> If I have not been blind, he could have sent me to Vietnam and I would have died in the war. Because I'm blind, I don't even know where to throw a bomb. <laughs> the one I say, not Peter said, eh? they, maybe he might throw a bomb on the wrong side. <laughs> so play the fool. <laughs> so because I'm blind, I didn't go to Vietnam. I'm still alive. I'm talking to you. True, isn't it? In this case, black is good, right? One day, two very loving couples, they were exchanging promises for I. Oh my darling, you must promise me that you will wait for me forever. The girl said, ah, Will you please say yes, please? They are please very powerful. <laughs> One they are, is a mantra. <laughs> oh yes, huh? I will wait for you. Here, she took her wallet out. Oh yes, huh? I will wait for you. Here, she took her wallet out from her pocket, took a very nice golden earring, gold earring, eh, earring, bula, ring, <laughs> ring, ring, no earring, like the one I'm using. Hmm. But this one no tricks, eh? original. Since you made your promise to me today, I give you a gold ring. Please promise me that you will use it every day of your life. Don't ever take it off. Because let this ring be a symbol of my love. That I still occupy a certain a special place in your heart. Okay, okay, okay. He put on the ring and never took it off. Go ring. Love. One day, he went to play football. You know football? Goalkeeper. You know goalkeeper, huh? Carol Stromsick. So he was playing football position, goalkeeper. There was this kick, very high ball, must jump. So he jumped very high, trying to catch the ball. But he didn't know at the goalpost, 
there's a little nail, you know, nail, paku, nail. So as he was reaching for the ball, the ball pushed his finger towards the goalpost, the ring got stuck to the paku, he came down, he counted his fingers, nine. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, where is the other one? On the goalpost. In this case, the ring was not white at all, isn't it? So, remember, actually problems has no color, hmm? no black, no white. This is a phenomena that we have to react to properly, skillfully. It's an opportunity for us to learn about ourselves. Make it more complicated for you. One day there was a farmer, huh? farmer. Definitely I'll tell you, problems has no color. Neither do anything good in life. Lo atta lo kadamma, no color, colorless. If you can see it that way, equanimity is very easy to achieve actually. Life goes on. One day was a farmer, poor fellow has an old horse. This kuda very tua, very old, but strong enough to plow a land, Not definitely stronger than a man brought the horse to the field. And he was toiling the field, the land, and suddenly he became very tired. So the farmer slept under the tree. When he got up, his one and only horse was missing. Ran away. So he came back, went to the village, no one. No problem. No siya. Just go back. Then a villager asked him, Hey, my good man, where is your old horse? Oh, I fell asleep under the tree. He ran away. Oh, you heard this story before, ah? Huh? No, eh? Such a lovely story you must hear. Oh, he says, you are very unlucky. How are you going to toil the field tomorrow? Yeah, another neighbor said, you are very unlucky. But farmer is a master of equanimity. When the person told him you are very unlucky, you know what he said? Maybe. <laughs> Wait, maybe means I don't know, isn't it? Same answer, eh? Ah. Uh, Say, so, yeah, maybe. How do you know you lucky or not lucky? So next day, he took all his things. He wanted to go and jungle himself. Now no horse. The land must be tight. When he arrived at his farm, he had the most pleasant surprise of his life. His old horse ran to the mountains and came back with a girlfriend. <gasps> ha! <laughs> now this is nice young horse, strong. Yesterday my old horse went missing. Today two horses, one young with a young wife, girlfriend. So that evening he went back with two horses. When the villagers saw him, Hey, where did you get that horse? Now it's a wild one. My old horse brought it back from the mountain. I think past karma got bought these two horses. Hoi, 
beautiful horse. You are very lucky. You are very lucky. Yes, three unlucky. Today, two houses, you are very lucky. What do you think this farmer said? Maybe <laughs> master of equanimity, not easily shaken, understand? Life goes on. Don't get excited. At the same time, don't go to the negative side. Get so down. What for? Live like a football. If attacking side kick you, you go that side. If the defending side kick you back, you go that side. We are not footballs. Uh, we control our life. Events is meant for us to react to. Events do not control us. And that's why you must learn how to say, maybe. And you say maybe. Ah! Next morning, his one and only son seeing the beauty of the newly acquired horse felt the urge to ride on the horse. So he climbed onto the horse and of course the wild one. So the son rode on the horse every day rode on the old horse to 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 this time young one the horse galloped and he fell and broke his leg because of the new horse. Then the neighbors come again. Farmer, your old your new horse swear ah? <laughs> now your son broke his leg. You are very unlucky for what did the farmer say? Maybe. Because that evening, unknown to anybody, the country was at war. So the government sent generals and soldiers to go to his village to gather all the young people to go to war and die there maybe. When he came to the farmer's house, look at the sun, Kaki Pata. Aya, like this, how to go to war? You don't need to go lah. So the neighbor's son all had to go to war. So when they came and see this farmer and told, your son's leg broken, nah? no need to go to war. He was are very lucky. <laughs> broken leg also lucky, brings good luck. Go home and break your leg then. So when... When the neighbors say you are very lucky, your son broke his leg. Don't play a fool. Huh? What did the farmer say? Enough la, or else the talk cannot finish in five o'clock. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he only show us one thing, isn't it? Eh? Problems are problems. Leave it alone. Don't paint it black, don't paint it white. Leave it alone means remember our enlightenment. React for that reason. Everything will be okay. I'm not a frustrated man who has nothing to do in life rather than to dream of enlightenment, eh, please. Eh? I feel that it brings us, put us on the right path. Everything we do we concern ourselves with what is useful, good. So you see, we had the secret formula. Metta, Karuna, Mudita, and maybe Rupika. Relax, this is the best formula, not for sale. You must practice, then you get the fruits. So, that brings me to one bad habit that some people have. Huh? Instead of facing their problems, they have a habit because they learn the word karma. If something bad happens, oh, oh, what to do? Karma. <laughs> karma, what to do? Never lah, karma.
If they lose something, uh, it cannot karma. Business no good, what to do, work so hard, cannot. I think my karma already lah. Already. <laughs> Then starting to be done. <laughs> What a silly way, isn't it? Eh? This word karma is badly abused. <laughs> Must be banned from the dictionary of our life. As if everything in life is karma. There is a haze, isn't it? Problem in Kuala Lumpur. If you want to go outside jogging and take fresh air, mm, breathe in, breathe out, breathe, mm, and like that, and then breathe out, and then you get sick. Ayah, ayah, I karma lah, I'm sick. That is not karma. Eh? Isn't that true? Mereka, they have a favorite uh, hawker food called satay celok. That means you take you take the things on the table, you celok. If you are too hungry, you can't wait for it to cook. You wala first, and then next day you go to the toilet. Lao sai, you say, ayah, what to do? Karma, no such thing. Bad habit. Not everything due to karma, please, ah. Huh? In your whole life, you have been playing basketball, always stretching and stretching and stretching, and then somebody comes with a hockey stick, you want to show off, take the hockey stick, start bending down every day, stretch. Now you want to bend, suddenly your back jam. Ayo, back ache, karma lah. Today my karma ripen, back ache. You want to show off? You say back a hey, karma. You cannot say life is like this. Karma is only a small portion of what governs our life. There are other systems, huh? And at the same time, if you want to talk about health, karma is one out of eight, huh? Like some Chinese people, every time they seek angin, hong, feng. As if that is the only reason why you are sick. So this is wrong, but karma is true. Karma, if understood in a proper perspective, is a very strong force. I would like to believe that. Uh, To be able to sit on a throne like this, wow. throne it must be karma. Live like a king. People carry you, feed you, feed you. King, I'm the latest king eh, in Malaysia. Where my subjects are all there? Is going out. Looks like I have to take a bus home tomorrow. <laughs> maybe it is karma. I said maybe. But remember, karma can manifest physically. But if you do not allow it to take your heart together. Your heart remains okay, no? Sometimes we cannot guarantee our business will not fail. Mikhail Gorbachev, he did not know that Russia will get into such big problems. Collective karma, I don't know. But if karma manifests itself in physical ways, Can see, I, I have this very wonderful friend. This is a real story of maybe also, but never mind. No more time for maybe. Enough. I think you understand this very true philosophy. Yeah, that's that's what the Buddha say. Yeah, that this is Maya illusion.
one day he was driving me in his Honda Accord. Nice red Honda Accord, he is the manager, one of the managers in one of the departments in one of the factories in Malacca. He was a very kind man. He took me home from massage, you know, I went for massage. Those good ones, eh, please, eh? don't get wrong ideas. Eh? Original one. So, he was driving me, you know, the car, the gear, it's quite near to my legs, isn't it? You know, as he's changing his gear, he, he held my thighs. Hiya, Kim Ling, he said. If I have magical powers, I just pass like that at me. He slapped my thighs. I can't feel. But quite loud. I know, I don't know pain or not. Pain, but loud. So I got magical power. I, ha! Like this, only you walk. How nice, man. And he was a happy man. I did not see him for three months. Then I heard he was going to Singapore and coming back. So I saw him. Kim Leng. I just found out I had cancer. He said he had cancer. I don't know what to say. But I remembered he hit my thighs and he said, if I have magical powers, ha, you walk. At that moment, I would like to tell him the same thing. If I have magical power, he had cancer at the neck. Eh? I thought I want to slap his neck. Afterwards, better not. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> he can feel. Four months later, he was at the advanced stage of cancer. He sent somebody to my house. I want to see Kim Lek. So I went there with my wheelchair. He felt very happy. He was very weak, but he struggled out from his room with his wife holding on to him. looked at me and he smiled. He shook his head, couldn't talk much. Then when there was no one around, he told me this. I don't know what to do, he said. I see that there's not much choice for me. Eh? I was told that every night, every night, a group of evangelists, you know, missionary, missionary people, will go there and uh, preach to him about a promised land. Make them so juicy that your tongue will come out when you hear, uh, nice place, heaven. Because his wife is a very staunch Christian. Eh? And uh, many of her friends belong to a very militant Christian group in Malacca. So he just wanted to see me and I just told him one simple thing. I said, I told him, many people must have recommended you different ways. I did not come today to recommend you another way. I told him cancer is cancer, leave it alone. So while the germs, while the cancer is due to germs, is bacteria, is it? No, no, virus, eh? whatever. Oh, while the cancer cells are eating away your body, 
Remember, it has nothing to do with your heart. It can claim your body, it cannot claim your heart. The cancer cells can only eat your body. Your heart remains the same. So if everything else fail, I told him, feel peaceful, be at peace with yourself. That is eternal, I told him. I thought nothing worked. Eh? I thought it did not work. I went home, almost forgot about him. A few days later, asked Kim Ling to come. A few days later, he was dying very bad. I saw him, you know what he told me? Kim Ling, I can't make it already. Lah. Can you do me a favor? I said, what? I can't get my... When I die, I want to be cremated. I want my ashes to be kept in Sikyangi Temple, Malaika. But they would not allow that because I'm not a member. And I told him, if you have enough merits, you will get what you want. I can try. I tried. I could not get a place for him. You know what he did? He called up the temple, asked for Reverend Kema Rama. Because his bangkat besar sikit. But this time, he did not ask for his ashes to be there. You know what he asked, Reverend? Reverend, I'm going to die. I want to be peaceful. Can you teach me how to meditate? <laughs> He's going to die that very soon, uh, less than 24 hours before he died. Can you teach me how to meditate? In his whole life, he has never heard the word meditation, nothing. <laughs> so Reverend went to the temple, brought the Buddha image, put in front of him and told him, Can you see the image? He said, Yes. Look at it. He said, Close your eyes. Can you still see the Buddha? Yes. Yes, he said. That night, Reverend went to visit him. Reverend, thank you very much. Your Buddha made me very peaceful. Can you leave it here for a few more days? Sure, no problem. And that morning he died. He passed away. Hmm? I like the way he felt about life, isn't it? And that is how we should look at problems. Eh? And that is the beauty of karma. If you cannot change the circumstances, there are things that is within our conscious control that we can change. How we feel about life, how much value we give to life, that is within our conscious control. Karma can, in that case, manifest only physically, but it cannot make you sad. Okay? In fact, to me, I feel, if something bad happens, that is a good lesson. It reminds you how negligent you must have been in the past. So, let this event remind me from today to be more careful. It's a good lesson, isn't it, if bad things happen. If you enjoy good things in life, let that remind you, remind me, that sometime in the past, I must have done something good. And that's why I'm happy today. As such, I should go on doing good. And that is how we react to life. And that is what is meant by live in the present. 
take every opportunity that comes your way, black or white, but take it well. Concentrate on doing good because our mind is anchored towards nirvana, freedom. Anchor there. Small goodness can take you a long, long way. One day there was a, cartoon, uh, a cartoonist, very poor, poor young man. No money to make studio. You no know, cartoonist, they have to have studio. He's an artist. So you know what he did? He used his father's garage. Turn it into a studio. You know, garage is always a neglected place, isn't it? But contented with the garage, he started drawing his cartoons. Doing advertising and cartoons. He loves to draw cartoons. And every night, he has some friends who visit him. You know who are his friends? Some little naughty mice, tikus. To some of us, we would have taken the situation in a very bad way, near. Maybe find a stick. <laughs> oh, I love the fellow. <laughs> Go to hell. But this man is different. He considered these rats, these little mice, as his friends, kept him company when he draw at night, part-time artist. So sometimes he likes when he gets hungry, he gets some bread. No bread. So he just, you know, he always remember his little friends. He just put some bits and pieces, throw it to the floor and they come and eat. Then the next day, throw it on the table, they start climbing the table, you know. And after some time, these tikus became his good friends. Hello, my little friend. And the tikus became so tame that he could take a closer look at them. And you know what happened? Because of his small little goodness, taking his chances well, not getting angry at the rat, being good, being kind, doing the right thing, skillful. Mickey Mouse was born. And that was Walt Disney. The most successful cartoon film industry that ever had. A phenomena is by itself, isn't it? See? Take your chances well and all will be good. So that's how I cope with my life. Live. Don't just survive. Not enough. Live it well. And everything is a chance for you to walk, no matter how small the step is, towards your enlightenment. With that, I would like to say good night. Hmm? Thank you very much.